So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us today for another interesting talk that today will be done by Professor Elkin Roa from Universidade Industrial de Santander in Colombia, talking about how the security instance to secure IoT sensors. And Elkin received his PhD degree in electrical and computer engineering from Purdue University in USA, where he was a Fulbright scholar his master's degree from the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, and his bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from Universidade Industrial de Santander in Colombia. From uh, 2014 to 2016, he was with uh, Rambos Inc., where he has engaged in high-speed service front-end design. Since uh, 2016, he has been in an associate professor at Universidade Industrial de Santander in Colombia, his research interests include secrets and architecture design for security, front-end secrets for high-speed interface, and low energy and efficient computing. Elkin currently serves as a technical program committee member of the IEEE Custom Integrated Secrets Conference, IEEE CAS technical committee member of Power Energy Secrets and Analog Signal Process. So thank you very much, Professor Elkin, to accept our invitation to give uh, this talk today. And uh, the floor is uh, with you to start uh, your talk. Thank you so much, Professor Ricardo, um, for inviting me. So this talk is about how are instances to secure IoT sensors. Um, in this talk, we are going to first try to motivate the work that we are going to present. We also um, are going to talk about glitch attacks in microcontroller units. Particular, particularly um, uh, glitches attacks, supply voltage attacks. On there, I'm gonna talk um, about encryption accelerators, particularly an AES-256 BIX uh, model accelerator, working as a peripheral in the, within a, a microcontroller. And also a physical and clonable function using nobility uh, random access memory macros that is also instantiated in microcontrollers. So let's start with the motivation. So let's talk about the IoT security problem. In <clears throat> network sensors in transportation systems, power grids, and industry, made an estimation of 25 billion installed devices in the world. The network security is as safe as the installed sensor nodes. So you have a one sensor node that is vulnerable, you have all the whole uh, sensor network uh, vulnerable. Okay, now let's talk about, uh, there are two different types of attacks. There are software attacks and there are hardware attacks. We are going to focus in this presentation to hardware attacks and hardware solutions to enhance security in uh, within system of chips. <clears throat> so, there are, there are several hardware known attacks, in particular, side channel attacks, employ supply, clock, and interface vulnerabilities to get access to devices. There are two types of side channel attacks, active and passive. Active, active attacks are more related to um, attacks that are when you are injecting some kind of uh, variable like for instance in this case or hitting you are hitting the device you might be able to see some vulnerabilities within the systems you might, for instance might be able to jump on in, in 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 some security layers of the microcontroller uh, there is another one that is optical so you can inject attacks using um, optical by decapping the chip the copying uh, the the, 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 the microchip and try to inject some optical attacks in order to see what kind of vulnerabilities the hardware has. <clears throat> there is a, another one that are the electromagnetic uh, attacks where you can e also try to attack by injecting some electromagnetic waves. And there is also the underfeeding, which is the decreasing or, or uh, the decreasing of the voltage supply. Or, in other cases, um, also maybe changing the clock signal of the system. You can also have 
under under clock or over clock in order to um, change the frequency of the microcontroller and therefore may also uh, try to break uh, the system or the operation of the regular functionality of the microcontroller. And then um, the last one, but not the least, are the glitches. So you can inject glitches, for instance, in the supply voltage um, network in order to see uh, how the microcontroller responds. We are going to focus on for in this first part of the, of the presentation on glitches attacks and also on how prevent them in query microcontrollers. So there are also the passive attacks. Uh, passive attacks are more related to uh, gather data and do some um, um, offline post-processing. So you can, for instance, take data from, from Differential um, power analysis and try to see um, what kind of um, vulnerabilities the system might present. So in this talk, again, we are going to focus on um, how are security instances and system chips or microcontrollers. So we are going to see how we can uh, uh, implement some peripherals to enhance the security of the system chip. We're going first um, try to um, to see how we can attack a microcontroller that it was supposed to work functionally without any bug, but then we might see that there are um, just functional bugs because of the nature of of the circuits within within this microcontroller. Then we are going to um, talk about uh, secure instances like uh, an encryption model how to accelerate the increasing mode without um, increasing the energy and also without um, uh, adding on additional vulnerabilities. And the last one, we're going to talk about physical and criminal functions and how these functions can be um, implemented within a system of chip. So let's talk about these attacks in my controllers. So, you can have an attack in the power supply line of a microcontroller. In this case, we're using um, one of our of the microcontroller design in, in our group. By the way, the first Chris 5 system on chip uh, in the world in 2000 that we uh, measured in 2015. And since we have all the data and all, all the knowledge of the circuit of the circuits that we use in this microcontroller, even the architecture, we can see um, what kind of vulnerabilities we are um, rising by attacking the, micro, the power line of the microcontroller using glitches. We are going to focus, we are going to try to do, show an example uh, of a stretching job. So just imagine that you have a, this microcontroller installed in one system where you have two, two or three different type of user privileges. And you might want to, to jump in those user privileges or just by uh, jumping in the in the when the um, the system is asking for the password, because imagine that you are attacking the supply lines by glitching the supply uh, lines, the su uh, glitching the voltage, and you might jump the instruction of the system when it's asking for the password, and then you get access to the system. So we are we are we are taking advantage of the microcontrollers that we have. We have actually three generations of microcontrollers in, in, in our group. Um, so, because we know all the details, all the implementation details of the microcontrollers, we are um, able to see what is going to happen to 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 the microcontroller, to the system, in the circuit level, in the architectural level, when we are attacking it uh, by using glitches. So, we are going to show you some some results with the first microcontroller that we developed here, the two which is the more um, the simple one. So um, <clears throat> this microcontroller has a core. It's, uh, it's a um, small core. It's PQRB32 related um, micro core microprocessor, RISC-5 microprocessor. And it, the peripherals are interconnected using an AC4 uh, bus. We, are, we have connected GPIOs, SPI interface, and data converters within also within the APB bus. So the goal here is try to um, to inject to the supply of the microcontroller a glitch. 
and we are going to use an under feeding. So we're going to try to decrease the energy of the volta supply by just uh, pulling uh, the volta supply on the main controller. And the goal is try to um, to jump in loops. So we have here, for instance, we put the microcontroller in infinite loops, and we are trying to break those infinite loops by glitching and see what is happening in the microcontroller. In order to do that, we employ a um, well-known um, system in the in the, um, the Huawei domain for doing um, this kind of attacks. We are using the chip whisper uh, board that um, let us kind of not just uh, um, push the glitches, but also to read all the details uh, of the microcontroller that we are in with the one which we are injecting the, the glitches. So again, here is the sample that we are going to, to do. We are going to try to see um, what will happen um, when, when we glitch the microcontroller in infinite loops. So here are some results. Uh, here we are um, kind of dumping the output of the of the of the microcontroller and um, also we even can put the the output within the gpios using leds but here we are just dumping the output constantly in, 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 in during live glitching and see that we are uh, uh, we are definitely jumping the infinite loops and we just jump and we keep and the microcontroller keep working as as, as expected but just jumping the loop, the, the the infinite loops, which again um, can bring um, a lot of um, security vulnerabilities. So with this with these results, we are we were able to um, we are able to understand what is going on in the microcontroller. So we go further we because we have the the full. The, the full system, we had this, we even have the, the standard cells that are um, being employed to um, to implement this microcontroller, all the digital blocks. And by doing that, also we are also understanding what is happening to the architecture of the microcontroller. We noticed that, um, of course, uh, the um, sequential standard cells like latches are the ones that are failing when we are decreasing the energy of the supply of what they are the ones. But we also notice that there are some issues going on also in the bus, uh, during the bus protocol. Um, so here this the setup of the glitch attack. So we are, again, we are injecting attacks using um, the FPGA within the chip whisperer FPGA board. And we also reading, um, uh, trying to read the input of the, to read some um, some data using the SPI of the microcontroller when we are attacking. And we also synchronizing the clock of that of, of the board that we were using to attack on the microcontroller. So um, we even went further and we improved the attack, uh, the glitching attack circuit that is implemented within the chip whisperer. We noticed that by by um, adding um, some additional transistors to the, uh, to modulate the energy uh, better than the feeding of the attack of the glitch, we will be able to see um, when the microcontroller is failing and also have control. We can also have control of the of the latency of the of the of the glitch. So here is uh, some pictures of the of the setup. We are using our the board that we use to characterize our, characterize our microcontroller and the the glitch generator. We put all that together and add some. As I say, we add some additional transistors, which are here in the product board. So here is the glitch wave of the first circuit where we have we don't have the uh, footer transistors, so we are um, showing here that the, the glitch can go all the way down to 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 level zero and come back. So <clears throat> here is also that we are able to 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 have attached as fast as 
a 10 megahertz, at, at, sorry, glitches as fast as 10 megahertz um, in, in different in domains. But here we are focusing on the digital domain. So here are some results of the uh, of the, the glitches that we uh, um, employ. Particularly, we are here um, plotting hundreds successful attacks in different frequencies of the glitch for different different frequencies of the glitch, and also different glitch durations. So to see um, how how. What is the spectrum of those glitches attacks? Again, here um, we are talking. Of, we are taking the attacks be between one megahertz and about four megahertz, which is about the frequency, the, nor the nominal frequency operation, uh, the range of the nominal frequency of the microcontroller. So we can see that in the nominal frequency operation range of the microcontroller, we have successful attacks in each frequency. Um, we call successful attacks when we are able to break the loop and keep going, uh, the, the, keep the operation going on the microcontroller. This is our, the results with the improved circuit of the attack. So we're, we're again, now we are able to have um, better control of the signal energy, of the glitch energy. Um, by doing that, we are able to, uh, to, um, to see how, um, how much glitch how much glitch we need and also to go um to study better what is going on in the circuit at the circuit level on the um, on the microcontroller here we are plotting for nine different frequencies of the regular operation of the microcontroller and <clears throat> and here we're showing different um amplitudes of the glitch attack that go from about uh 800 millivolts all the way to to the nominal voltage and also plotting the the energy of the, of the glitch within each frequency of the attack um just by checking the mean of the sub of the glitch the energy of the glitch we can we can see uh um uh what was what would be the the um, again, this, the voltage sensor that is required in order, for instance, to um, to to chill the microcontroller against this kind of attacks. That's one way to think uh, of a solution. But again, um, there are different uh, potential solutions in order to avoid this kind of attacks. The good thing here is, as I mentioned, is that we are using a microcontroller that we know all the details of the microcontroller. We know the architecture. We know the circuit level from from the GPIO, from the regulators, all the way to the core of the microcontroller. By having that kind of details, that kind of knowledge, we can even study. And by doing those attacks, we can know what is going on uh, on the system. This is. Um, Kind of a new report compared to the reports that are already in the literature that uh, they report this kind of glitch attacks, but in commercial micro uh, system of chips or commercial microcontrollers, where they don't know many details of, of the of the microcontroller. Again, um, having this kind of control, we can also uh, understand what will be the leak glitch energy required to attack the microcontroller. This is a summary of the. Um, number of resets that we have when we are at, uh, doing the, the glitch attacks um okay with that with that um part of the presentation um we have uh, different kind of solutions for this kind of glitch attacks that still we haven't um published so we are not presenting here but we can tell you that um there are different solutions there, there, there is there is a need for different solutions in hardware, not just in, not just in architectural level, but also in circular in order to protect a single microcontroller that will be uh, um, the brain of a sensor network that is uh, connected with a, a bit system like a power grid. So mm -hmm. this kind of vulnerabilities will increase um, with the knowledge of these kind of devices. And you will see in the future um, 
uh, additional attacks and even a diverse type type of attacks um, for in Howard. So now, now let, we're going to try to to change a little bit and change just to um, to the encryption accelerator, which is another part of the of the system for, for a secure system where you need to secure the data, you need to protect the data. So we're going to talk about um, AES 250 CBs accelerator that was implemented and, and measured within the group and to show you what are the issues in order to implement this kind of accelerator for uh, low energy IoT sensors. Like again, like sensors that, will, that are currently deployed and they will be deployed like in power grids and transportation systems where those kind of uh, sensors will be low cost and even um, low energy or they will be supplied by uh, energy, uh, so energy harvested sources. So <clears throat> here in, in, in a system on ship, um, we need to focus when we are talking about encrypting data or moving data within the system, within the, within the microprocessor and the memory, or even from, from, from the microprocessor to, um, to the external world, we need to focus on the limiting issues for uh, uh, energy efficient accelerators. And this is true even for all the current trend in, in AA accelerators, like uh, deep neural network accelerators within the chip. So here we are showing um, the relative, relative energy cost on, on the y axis and in the x in the x axis we are showing um, the different parts of this of the systems from the ram which is going to be the external all the way to for instance uh, the L, the L, uh, in this case um the addition um the addition within the the logic unit so for Going from, we are here putting in, in base the logic unit asset. So going to the register within uh, the logic unit will take um, 1x energy cost. And going just to the register file, which is there close to, to, to the core, will take 10 times the energy cost of the data transportation between the, um, the core and the register file. Now we are talking about just the multiplication instruction will take 30 times and this run that is close also to the core within the die will take 50x. So it is it is not easy to implement an accelerator, a data uh, increasing accelerator um, that is uh, that requires, um, for instance, to go to get access to the SRAM access. So it is it is not it is not easy to to see um encryption model in low energy sensors that will be implemented um outside of the of, of the mac controller right now most of the sensors the low energy sensors that are running uh, this kind of encryption in software we know all the vulnerabilities in software but again we are not talking about software we're going to talking about hardware and they again the issue with software is the cost is going to be higher just thinking here that just for DRAM, the cost is about 6,000 times. Um, so software base will be about now more than that. Uh, so we need to have the energy cost within um, 10 times or 50 times in order to um, to be able to have encryption, kind of this kind of encryption engines, like 250 CBIX um, within a low energy sensor. So this is the um, AES that we uh, implemented. So we implemented the AES um, uh, within with close to to the core. So and again, just imagine now that we if we do implement it um, outside of the core, we're in a peripheral within the within the APP bus. So the goal again is try to have um, data transportation um, close to ten times. And if we are talking about um, putting uh, the modal accelerator farther away, like in the peripheral bus, we will 
we cause an addition as we are showing here in this slide. So again, we are focused uh, for this AS, we are focusing in, in, in an ultimate architecture that reduces memory access in order to improve the energy efficiency and it's close to, 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 to the core. So here we showed that we, um, in order to do this, we need to, um, to design a pipeline architecture um the key that when we are asking that at, at setting um the flows but um concurrently here um we go through 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 a nonlinear um matrix multiplication in order to to get it but this kind of pipeline um as a director still has some energy issues so we def decided that we need to have different kind of stages. So here we are showing that we implement a system with one state pipeline, uh, one, one Xbox accelerator with a lookup table, or in order to do comparisons and see well, uh, how we can improve energy efficiency. This, this unit was um, including an Xbox custom instruction inside of the microprocessor. Uh, and we also use it inside of a custom AS core, which we hear uh, by um, having a direct memory access. We perform instruction execu execution for analysis of memory access um, by only accelerating the Xbox. The, the memory access sure was reduced, but it was reduced just a little, as we shown here in this figure. And this reduction was not significant, and the execution of this box only reduces around 10% of the load distribution. So we need to look for different solutions. So this, in comparison, what it is shown in the lit in the literature, is what most people do. They do acceleration, but they don't understand that again the data transportation. They don't go all the details. is is, is costly, um, including this data. This um, um, this penalty energy will, um, at the end, will not result in, in, in a lot of benefits. Let me check the time. This is the architecture of the AS core. Uh, includes a data memory asset, the, the one that we uh, implemented um, to push the block, uh, to plus the block from C frame, and also uh, by being able to use it as a standard standalone memory make AS engine. Uh, the DME automation is provided with a state machine for reading and writing chunks of 128 bits from the memory. This procedure of reading and writing is monitored by several counters, so um, we are able to, to, to have control of what is going on on the, on the transportation data. We did design the energy consumption of the core reaches about down to 1.5 nanojoules, um, one optimal, at the optimal frequency of 3 megahertz and using a supply voltage of 0.4 volts. So um, these results using the custom instruction were capable of achieving a two times energy reduction. Um, and, and a memory map, map core reaches about 300 times. And the DMA inclusion, the DMA, uh, the memory access uh, model and inclusion makes the design to be pushed up to 100 times in the overall system. So, in the result, we have uh, compared to some results, um, time, two times, 2.5 times better performance than what is, is posted in the literature. So again, um, here we are um, emphasizing on energy consumption of increasing models. So you, 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 as we point out in the first part of the presentation, we we need to focus on different parts of the of the hardware, not just on the on the vulnerabilities attacks by by but so but also all those circuits and all those systems to secure data to secure the chip need to be low energy. This was fabricated in 100 nanometers. Here we show details of the different. So now let's let's jump down there up there to a different um, instance or our security, our security instance, which is the uh, physical and countable function. In this case, we are going to show an NVRAM path. So, um, what is a physical and, and countable function? 
uh, here in, in the circuit, uh, um, we are showing the a physical incremental function as a challenge and a response. So for each challenge, it has a response. And these um, um, uh, challenge and response pair are quite unique. So you, I, you can use this kind of unique um, pairs as an identifier for a chip. Um, the response of a good path is usually characterized by, by being random. Um, that means that we need to have the same probability of having ones and zeros at the output. And a unique path generates a different response to a given challenge. So these features allow us to use paths to generate, for instance, reliable and stable encryption keys, like for instance, to be employed in the AS256 encryption model. Um, and therefore um, it is relevant um, to pay attention to the implementation of physical uh, a path. So just imagine now that is the path is no low energy, is not uh, reliable enough and also um, it's not secure enough <clears throat> to um, you are having an additional hardware vulnerability. So let's check about the prior art. So several reported path design methods, so, uh, such as SRAM path, Freenos iterator path, or even hybrid path, uh, acquire key outputs by amplifying signals from random physical properties. For instance, some properties are the most common ones are the propagation delays, like uh, or even the the jitter in the in the non oscillator and the metabolistic metastability uh, of the lash or even the threshold voltage. Um, one of the issues is that this path under certain conditions, for instance, of temperature or supply voltage or even um, process variations, um, they should generate unique, random, and stable response. Uh, but we know that. Um, the, these random physical properties are, are amplified. Um, to the, so what we use this kind of variation or these conditions in order to amplify it. But again, we know that these kind of variations also um, limit uh, the reliable output of the of, of the path. So we will see later on why, why what I meant for this. So again, um, this um, this variability of these different conditions make um, an unstable keys. So a key for a given voltage, like a one point two voltage, for instance, will give you a, a, a different key from one volt or, or one volt for the same challenge. Which this uh, will give you an unreliable uh, key for, for instance, for an increase in engine. To solve these problems, in particular the stability, there have been methods in the literature uh, for stabilization. For instance, in this case, um, um, people had shown that uh, by using OTSI, the employing the outside breakdown mechanism, you might be able to harden the key bit. So once you have um, um, unique enough unique bit by post processing, then you will be break down the outside in order to have a stable uh, keys. But this uh, this has a problem, right? So this can this kind of keys will be, this kind of key will be able to are exposed to a physical attack. I can go and do some um, the copying of the chi and but just seeing at the chi I can be I will be able to see um, the key just by applying even imaging techniques. Taking into account these stability issues, uh, we have proposed a path design based on a floating gate, no volatile RAM. We doesn't lose stability uh, due to variations in environmental conditions and uses a method of, of establish, stabilization that doesn't present physical changes uh, that could be explored in an attack uh, of the path kit. So um, we, um, we are employing um, the capability of recording um, or better um, to store in the key um, within within the same macro. So with this, we achieve a stable path design, real, reliable enough for encryption 
key generation and authentication. So this is this is the floating gate nobility ramp path cell design that we use. Um, again, we are using a, a, a floating gate based uh, nobility ramp. The path key bits are obtained by converting the competing result of the accumulated charges into in, in the two floating gates of the of the cell. So here um, we have charges in in the diff, in, in the two differential floating nodes. Um, since during the process fabrication, we have ionization. Um, so this kind of ionization might change um, uh, the, the, the number of charges of these floating gate nodes. And therefore, um, we have um, a kind of random source of, of, of data. Um, so the logic state of the differential cell is, will be determined by the difference between the number of charges stored in the two floating gates and the differential current uh, finally generated by these two charges as shown in the figure as current I1 and I2. The, uh, um, these cells can be electrically locked, um, protecting our stable path key uh, from writing. So we are able even to go and protect the cell uh, for writing um, by, by using some um, digital operation. So again, we demonstrate that uh, we can obtain path key bits from this um, from the raw fabricated cells, and after fabricate and, and after measuring and post processing these cells, we are able to to um, to store an, a stable key. So we will show you how how this works. So the proposed process of, uh, of this, we, we uh, to generate a reliable path key, first we read the raw keys from the path output, and then post-process the, these keys and later on write back the key into the into the into the cell, and finally we block the cell for write. So with this, we have a reliable path key and a stable path key. So again, as I say, we read the path to get the rookie. Um, and this mechanism that we are using is the competitive mechanism of the store chart during fabrication, which produces a differential query within the cell that is read. And this reading by columns in the macro is read by the, um, uh, and amplified by a large well, sense amplifier. So after reading the cells, Repeatedly, so we read many times the path key of the cells just for statistical statistical um, reliability, um, and then we notice that there are there are bits that are not stable. So we call this here unstable bits. So we need to do something with these unstable bits. Let's see, for instance, we are going to show that after two or three hundred reads, um, twenty or five. Actually, five to twenty percent of the uh, of the reads have different values, and therefore, with an unstable bits, then need to be um, stabilized. So, therefore, we need post processing in order to 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 stabilize the key. So, we use two post processing methods. One is called uh, temporal majority voting, and the other one uh, um, on an abduct uh, counter. So the first one, the majority voting, uh, consists of calculating the mode of the data in a time window to find the turn of the bit and establish, establish the bit value. So for instance, here we have, we are being five uh, different values and we go moving uh, this window in order to um, to calculate uh, the, major, the, the, the major appearing value and then uh, stabilize uh, the, the output there. The thing is, with this method, not all the bits are completely stabilized, as we've shown here uh, in, in, in the output. So, um, so we need to we need to do an additional post-processing. We employ another method, although that method works, uh, has a good um, statistical data. We use another method, which is the up-down counters. 
Um, so how it works, we have a counter of MA bits. In this case, we're using five bits, six bits, uh, six bits, which starts in the middle of the range. So we start uh, in the, mi the middle range, in this case, um, to, to the M minus one. And we start decreasing counter if the B raise one. Or decreasing if the B raise zero. So here we show that we are going um, to the to the reading path outputs. And finally, the counter will reach the value of two raised to n power, which means that the b is one or zero, which means that the b is zero. The up-down counter method can be running definitely until the pan value is resolved. So it will depend on how you take the decision. This post process, this post process key now is stable with these kind of methods, and now we need to write back to the uh, to the MB run cell, writing the key into the cell and taking advantage of the not volatile um capacity to, to store the stable key uh we have a um a reliable and a stable key and finally uh, the cells are locked to prevent programming attacks and to maintain the security and stable and stability of the key um <clears throat> now the hundred the hardened path piece don't show any physical changes that might be exploited by imaging techniques because just by writing back the data, you are not changing or you are not uh, breaking down the outsides as in previous uh, works. The marker imp was implemented in 180 nanometers, standard digital CMOS. Um, and this marker, as again, as we had shown, has been um, tested and measured. These are the measurements of the row kits. Uh, uh different uh, a, a, a different values this in this case we're cho showing the, the values are nominal condition but also at different uh supply voltages we perform 2000 readings of the pop cell which yields about an average of about 2.4 percent on a stable disk when we are talking about the row keys then we calculate um, um the number of of ones uh, generated in, in bit stream for the, for six measured chips and found out that the average normalized humming weighs about 0.48 with a standard deviation of 0.15. Here we're showing the result for the post-processing of the row keys using five and seven and 11 bit windows, obtaining, obtaining better results, of course, with the largest uh, majority voting uh, bit number windows. So, um, so we, as again, we showed that the TMB was not completely enough to establish the B, so we use the up-down um, up counters, which solves um, all, for all the bits completely. Final, finally, we report 100% stable and reliable keys, because again, we are um, um, writing back the data and lock, locking, uh, the data, so users will not be able to to add, um, to, ch to change those keys. And this path also can be used in low power systems applications, like in low energy sensors, which is the the, the other talk that we can sh we are showing here that these uh, um, that this kind of um, path is, or this kind of security instance are 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 are. are um, are ready to be implemented in low energy sensors. Okay, so just I think it's yeah, it is time for summarize to summarize the uh, the talk. Um, we know meltdown and spectre; these are two uh, well-known vulnerabilities discovered by uh, by Google in in Intel microprocessors. And people have been saying, okay, this is low to medium security risks. Um, we know this kind of security uh, issues uh, will rise by um, architecture vulnerabilities, which can be um, classified as hardware vulnerabilities or hardware security issues. Now, let's imagine um, uh, uh, the network sensors that we have the the quantity, the quantity or number of devices or, or 
sensors that we have right now, we, there is an estimation, as I, as I said before, of 25 billion uh, devices of things or sensors connect, interconnected. So the security risks, again, we can say that is in the middle uh, because we don't know many details of the implementation or better the attacks, are, the attackers are still knowing details of the implementations in order to attack. But here I'm just showing um, um, a possibility of uh, an, an attack for an infrastructure where we are using a lot of IoT sensors. Currently, for instance, the power grid um, that we have installed in our countries they um, they have tons of um, SCADA systems and also sensors um, that are um, deterring automatic operation. So now just imagine that one of those sensors can be attacked, for instance, and take down um, two or three uh, main generators within a country, within, within a system. This will uh, provoke a um, completely um, uh, fail of the power grid system and a country in, in, in a full country can be um, uh, completely down in, 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 in supply, power supply. So the summary is or the takeaway is that we require further hardware and software solutions to, uh, to avoid this kind of high risk events. And again, as I showed in the first part of the presentation, there is too much to discover um, within hardware, um, vulnerabilities of hardware that are, are rising. And even, as I say, is in, in the case of, of the ones that we apply here for my controllers that they were supposed to work in operational conditions. But once we start changing and moving things here and there, we notice that there are vulnerabilities in not just circuit level, but also in hardware layer. So we need to start um, proposing solutions in, in all in, in, in all areas, for instance, in the standard cells in order to to, to blend, blind all these kind of uh, um, system architectures uh, to future attacks or future um, a task that will be known by attackers. With this, I want to acknowledge my grad and undergrad students that have been working on this area. Um, Luis Rueda, Cristian Duran, Felipe Castro, Diana Zapea, Karen Flores, and our alumni, Javier Ardila and Hector Gomez. I also want to thank Ciencias to, for partially supporting these, um, these kind of projects. And also uh, Sci-Fi, um for providing um access to fabrication these are the content details in case you have you want uh, to have further discussion about this topic thank you so much so thank you very much elkin uh, so now we are open for questions so if you want to do any question please do it uh, using the youtube chat channel as soon as possible. Uh, so we have uh, now one question here by uh, uh, Amnol Sink Narvairia. Uh, I don't know if I'm spelling correct. So uh, thank you very much, Amnol, for your question. So Amnol is from IIT uh, Hyderabad in India. And his question is uh, reliability and remaining useful life of IC is also major concern in hardware security domain. So I want to know how to find age or RUL uh, accurately. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's definitely a good question. Um, yeah, um, this is this is a well known issue with you know in in the defense um, system. So they try to put monitors. Um, aging monitors in order to 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 decide when the the system should be uh, should be in operation. So aging monitors will be able to let you know if the system will start failing, and those kind of failures again, as as Amol pointed out, my uh, my uh, my open to to new vulnerabilities. 
So um, the short answer is that yes, we need an, an additional hardware instances to measure uh, aging within the ship. So I'm seeing no more questions uh, for the moment. So if you have a question, please do it as soon as possible. So uh, I have one, uh, uh, Elkin. Yep. Uh, so um, how you can see the compromise between uh, all these uh, uh, extra secrets to cope uh, with uh, security attacks and so on, and uh, also considering power and uh, extra area and so on? Yeah, it's, it's something that we are, I mean, the, we need to start dealing with. I mean, it, because we need to deal with security, we need to start paying for this kind of new, uh, these penalties, area penalty, energy penalty. So how to deal with that? Again, this is in our hands, in the circuit designer's hands. So we need to, uh, to, to, to bring solutions, uh, low energy solutions, low energy solutions, efficient solutions, so um, we are not now selling uh, security instances instead of, you know, functional chips. So <clears throat> this is this is kind of now. Uh, um, so one, for instance, in the in the case of two random number generators, physical and countable functions, encryption models. This is um, a hot topic right now for uh, trying to decrease the the energy consumption of these. Um, these um, models and also the area in order to be uh, able to implement in low energy and low cost uh, sensors. So it's, it's currently it's a, a, major, a major trend and people is, uh, is discovering and bringing up new solutions to, to this. So it's, it's an open, it's an open problem. Thank you. So people are a little bit ashamed to date, so there is no more questions uh, by the audience. But uh, uh, I have another point that, uh, so we are seeing nowadays a lack of integrated circuit around the world. So many, many industries is stopped now because they don't have the, the chips to, to include in their products. For example, here close to Porto Alegre, there is a general mortar plant. And uh, since several months, uh, they are stopped because they don't have the necessary chips to produce their cars. No? So uh, this is one example of the increasing of uh, the need of uh, microelectronics chips are around the world. So in our opinion, what... Uh, people in Latin America can do to help in this situation? Yeah. Uh, the, the, this kind of um, um, problem that we are facing right now with um, the, the, um, the lack of enough um, fabs to produce these microchips, then it's part also of the, of the economy, right? The, the, it was it, it was not common for plants like General Motors to to have uh, to produce to to or to buy a lot of um, stock chips or stock in a lot of chips because it was it was compensated. so they were just using the chips uh, or buying the chips that they were uh, requiring it. Um, this translate to to. Um, to the fabbing and also to all the, um, I would say the design, uh, the process from the design all the way to the fabrication, that um, that is every time you know, it's, it's becoming higher and higher. So because it's becoming higher and higher, so cheap um, new chips, new chip wins, new ch uh, chip fabrication is becoming also highly cost. So what we need here are solutions um, to decrease this, this, this kind of cost in all, in all the chains. So in this case, from designing all the way to, to fabrication. 
in our area in circuits uh, and also in CAD and you know software for for to design this kind of circuits and to verify this kind of circuits there is a lot of work to do so what i encourage um, the latin american students is try to uh, you know to that are working on electronic engineering to go further and understand these kind of challenges and try to solve them because these kind of solutions will be reflected uh, all the way to 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 the economy like in this case to decrease this kind of shortage okay thank you yeah i think there is a lot of opportunities uh, increasing in latin america no uh, because there is a lack of uh, uh, people with the skills to design chips and to produce cdas around the world and uh, for example we are seeing uh, an action nowadays uh, uh, here in brazil uh, where uh, companies like silvaco that is based on usa they have a uh, also a branch here in south of brazil in porto alegre uh, rio intent now in silica also hcl uh, in campinas that is former uh, xp and former freescale so all these now they are uh, engaging people also shippers in santa catarina that is a, a designer house that uh, also have uh, offices in uh, representation in in USA and Switzerland. So all these companies, they are engaging people, no? So uh, there is a great opportunity for uh, Latin American uh, professionals and uh, students to to see uh, microelectronics and uh, EDA as a good uh, opportunity to, to work uh, uh, now and in the near future, no? Yeah, definitely. And I want to emphasize that um that due to, to the pandemic it is becoming uh, it, in, in, for our um our world that is a, a circuit design it is becoming relevant the um, the remote work so in, most of my my friends that work in this area in, in circuit I, and i guess in silica the new i mean the silica that uh, got the people from Zetec, there are um working remotely as most of the circuit designers in the world so also mm -hmm. the my friends that are working on the silicon valley they're still working on remotely and they're able even to put um same output or even more output uh, in that area so so circuit design uh, as professor ricardo um, and not just circuit design uh, car design or all these um architecture design is becoming even more relevant in current um in current situation like pandemic we know this chart is because um, um the, the needs for new, for consumer electronics to co to connect from from home um so so it is it is more relevant to to find um skilled people in the world that work in this area um why latin american is uh, can be uh definitely a a, a key a key player in this in, in in this area i will say um that we have quite a number of schools uh in south america that are pushing hard in order to um in in, in electronic engineering and graduating smart people so with i believe that um we might see um within the next two three or four years a new um uh, yeah, how to say a new source of microelectronics in America, as Professor Ricardo Reyes uh, pointing out, uh, in silica um, coming to, to to Brazil, and I will say that I, uh, that maybe within one or two years we will will do that that list that Professor Ricardo just mentioned will duplicate easily. Okay, thank you. I, I forgot to include also in this list, uh, for example. Synopsis uh, in Chile, uh, KDC in Belo Horizonte. So all these companies on microelectronics, they are engaging people now and they are going to keep engaging for several years. So uh, if uh, some of you that are attending this very nice talk by Elkin today, uh, you should strongly consider to to become a, a professional in, 
in chip design or uh, EDA uh, uh, design, and because there is a very nice opportunities, no. Mm -hmm. yeah. So thank you very much, El King, for this very interesting talk uh, uh, today. Bye bye. Have a nice uh, weekend.